that authentic fruit is pleasing to god and it is so visually seen by others so by looking into all these things we always have to be very sure whether we have a fake faith or a genuine faith if we do have that faith are we expressing them in the right way at the right time the right moment if we do not have either one as james does say it's like a dead spirit there is no air in the wings the wing bags faith with no works and work with no faith they both are waste we need to admit ourselves analyze ourselves what is the level of the faith we do have and what is the level of the works we do have a gracious ever loving everlasting father thank you for this time you have given us lord for the words you have given us thank you for the time you have made us to prepare for this time and speak to people and let these people know more about these words lord that they it will bring them closer to you help us to grow more in your faith through these words open the eyes of our hearts hmm so that we will see the things that you see lord be with us throughout the study in jesus amen. precious name amen 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 as we continue to study in the book of james we are almost into the second chapter we have looked into various other factors that contributes to our faith when i was preparing this i came across this uh statement and somebody said like we didn't know who said this he said faith is like calories you cannot see them but you can always see the results so faith is like calories so this is the main theme James is also emphasizing in his book it all comes down to one single word works as i told you in the beginning when we started with James the main emphasis here is real faith results in genuine works so the crux of the whole message what James is trying to emphasize here is in the passage whatever we are going to look into today James chapter 2 verse 14 to 26 what good is it dear brothers if you say you have faith but don't show it to your show it by your actions can that kind of faith save anyone suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food or clothing and you say goodbye and have a good day stay warm and eat well but then you don't give that person any food or clothing what good does that do so you see faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds it is dead and useless now someone may argue some people have faith 
others have good deeds but i say how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds i will show you my faith by my good deeds you say you have faith for you believe that there is one god good for you even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror how foolish can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless don't you remember that our ancestor abraham was shown to be right with god by his actions when he offered his son isaac on the altar you see this faith and his action work together his action made his faith complete and so it happened just as the scripture says abraham believed god and god counted him as righteous because of his faith he was even called the friend of god so you see we are shown to be right with god by what we do not by faith alone rehab the prostitute is another example she was shown to be right with god by her actions when she hid some messengers and sent them safely away by a different road just as the body is dead without breath so also faith is dead without good works we have read this passages there is one penetrating question that arises of all these verses if you be, if you say you believe like you should why do you believe or why do you behave like you shouldn't if you say you believe like you should why do you behave like you shouldn't this is the important question james is putting in front of us as i told you in the beginning this is the main section or the main thesis of his whole book whatever passages we looked earlier is pointing towards this section and whatever passages that follows this section is going to point again to this particular section of James chapter 2 verses 14 to 26 see he he raises up this important question two important questions if you look into the verses dear brothers if someone says he has faith but he has no works can that faith save him so these are the first two questions he poses it it's almost like asking a question with the person who has got a driving license but doesn't know how to drive that's the important thing like we have to look here people may call themselves as christians and they are believers they say they have faith but they do not show that in their results that is work that's what here james is asking if somebody has faith and they claim to have faith in christ but if they do not show that he says that faith is a fake faith and the second question he here asked here is can that faith save that person what does that mean as the quality of the faith will that faith produce any good fruit in their life he follows these with the four important characteristics of a genuine faith he asks these two questions and he gives us four important characteristic features of what genuine faith is following from verses 15 to 20 the first characteristic feature he says here is genuine faith is not indifferent 
but involved genuine faith is not indifferent but involved if you look closely into the words he says suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food or clothing and you say goodbye and have a good day stay warm and eat well but then you don't give that person any food or clothing what good does that do what james here emphasizing us when there is a need when you see people with need he doesn't ask us to throw a charity they are all looking for some needy things food and clothing it's not just we read this needy things in james but also paul emphasizes this in first timothy chapter 6 verse 8 he says if we have food and covering we will be content so i think like james and paul they touch into the basics of life all we need is clothing and food and shelter so james is here mentioning about people who are in dire need of food and clothing the basics of life if somebody is needing them are we in a situation to provide them or we just try to ignore them by filling in by saying good words go in peace be warmed and be filled are we really showing that genuine love for them when these people are in dire needs we all agree with this most of us we have not come to that situation where we do not have seen our dining table empty god has blessed us with every meal all these years he has blessed us with a good shelter all these years he has blessed us with good clothing all these years but imagine and we have seen people around this country who do not have this they don't have proper food they don't have proper clothing and they, they don't have a roof above their head and if we see this and when we are in a position that when we can help these kind of people what does our mind say and what is our reaction are we giving an ear to the people who are in need or are we giving our shoulders for the people who are trying to seek some comfort the same thing john is also mentioning in first john chapter 317 but whoever has the world's good and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him how does the love of god abide in him so what is the main implication here is if there is genuine love it reaches out to others and there is real faith it produces an act of a compassion what james here says is genuine faith is not indifferent but it is involved the second characteristic feature here he says is that genuine faith is not independent but in partnership that's what we see here in um the 17th 17th verse james says that genuine faith is always accompanied by results if it doesn't have any results he mentions it dead in other in other words it's useless or important that's what i earlier told you like it's a fake faith 
And the third characteristic feature, what he says here is, genuine faith is not invisible, but on display. That's what we see here in verse 18. He puts in a hypothetical person who says, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works. And I will show you my faith by my work. This is, this is a kind of an argument, kind of a statement, what he gives here is. I keep some of the, some of the people you have, should have seen who always will not express their love by their action, even though they have faith. If questioned, they, these people will always give an answer. I always keep my faith to myself. They don't wear the religion on their shirts. That's what we say. But James puts up a different argument. We have to be very careful when we read this verse because it always gives us a wrong message. James is not disconnecting salvation from faith. But on the contrary, we are saved only by faith. With saving faith, it produces works. But works do not save us. Work alone does not save us. Those people who are believers, who are saved, will naturally demonstrate work. We will look into that in detail in the coming uh, verses. Moving on to the fourth characteristic feature, genuine faith is not intellectual, but for the but from the heart. Here James is giving another imaginary kind of a person, a religious intellectual person. We all have seen these kind of religious intellectual people. Um, but before going into this, what he says here is that God is one. That's what we see in, in, in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy 6, 4. It says, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. The basic of this theology here is the intellectual of the truth, intellectual of the truth. What happens, what, what happens here is for these intellectual people, those people whose faith is merely intellectuals, that's very common with the demons. That's what he says, like even the devils, they know that there is a God, but they don't have any works. So people have to have faith and works. Recently, in all the media, you should have seen like there are more religious intellectual talks coming up. These people, they always boast of all kinds of um, scientific evidences, historical uh, credentials. Um, they talk more about uh, the religion as a social, psychological, and philosophical phenomena and everything. But these people, they don't have the real faith in them. They know all about the truth, but they have an invisible wall in their heart and their mind that they do not have the genuine faith. That's, that's, that's the best example I could give for this intellectual um, um, faith of these people. They don't have that faith in them. That's, that's the reason when you look into verse 20, James says, are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without work is useless, referring them to as dead people. So faith without work is useless, it's good as death. 
imagine a situation another example what i could give you is imagine a situation where one of the best friend or a family member who has lost a job and is not able to find a job for a long time and that family is not able to provide anything for their school going children not able to buy them any school supplies not able to buy them school uniforms but at the same time god has blessed us with a good job and all the other basic amenities what should be our response towards that person who is now suffering if we do have that real faith in them are we not supposed to reach them and show our love That's the work james here is mentioning moving down from those going into verses 21 here june after giving the characteristic features of genuine works he takes two examples to demonstrate whatever he was mentioning he takes two great examples one is abraham and one is rahab if you look closely into these two per- people persons they are totally opposite examples totally contradictory like east and west polar opposites abraham is the father of the hebrews but rahab she is a gentile prostitute abraham he was a man with great power and he had a lot of respect among his people but rahab she didn't have any reputation at all and abraham he received all the promises of god at rahab she was breaking all god's moral laws the reason why james is picking up these two extremists all believers in this world fall in between these two categories of people abraham and rahab the message here is jesus messages and work applies to people who fall under these two categories it's not james alone who is mentioning or using abraham and rahab but even in Hebrews we have we have seen Abraham and Rahab being used in in Hebrews 11:7 11:17 sorry 11:17 it says by faith Abraham when he was tested offered Isaac and he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son if you go down Hebrews 11:31 we read by faith rahab the harlot did not perish along with those who were disobedient after she had welcomed the pious in peace so both in hebrews and in james if you look carefully into the verses the emphasis is on the works that were done by faith works that were done by faith this means the actions were the result of an genuine faith genuine faith of a believer if you go down if you watch carefully because like there is now going to be a little bit of contradiction which i want to mention but there is no contradiction at all if you look down in verse 21 it reads 
don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? If you look carefully, it says justified by works. Justified by works. It does contradict. It does contradict what Paul was saying in Romans. Hold here, and if you look into Romans chapter three. verse 28 where paul writes for we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law justified by faith but what we read here in james is justified by works James denying the gospel or Paul is completely wrong in his statement both of them do not that's the answer here James is not disputing Paul and Paul is not correcting James if you look in acts chapter 15 verses 13 to 21 James is fully supporting Paul for preaching the gas preaching of the salvation by grace through faith and again James defends Paul's reputation among the Jewish believers in Jerusalem nowhere do we see Paul and James puzzling with each other over the message there is no contradiction there is no contradiction in this words like whatever we see here in james 221 and romans 328 but how do we justify these two which seems to be a contradiction here the word justify is used in two different contexts the word justify is used in two different contexts one is to declare righteous that's the one meaning of the word justify and the other meaning for the word justify is demonstrate as righteousness so there is two different meanings at two different contexts to declare righteous and to demonstrate as righteous to to explain more of this it's the same justification on both sides of a coin it is expressed in two different ways like the two sides of the same coin i'll get to you in brief all is looking at the root of the salvation that is what he says is justified so paul listen carefully paul is looking at the root of salvation at the moment of salvation we are all saved through faith plus nothing we are all saved through faith plus nothing but at the same time on the other side of the coin james is looking at the fruit of the salvation that is after salvation after the root of faith is planted within us our lives will bear the fruit of good works another way to see this is to have two different perspectives or two different views paul looks at life from god's perspective 
but James is looking at life from a human perspective. Paul uses the word justified to mean declared righteous in the sight of God. That's why I told like he's looking from God's perspective. That is, even though we were still sinners, God accepted us. And it was through our faith we gained that salvation. It was a free gift. James is addressing the believer who have already experienced this gift of salvation. So he uses the word justified to mean demonstrate ourselves to be righteous in the sight of the people to show that we have received God's gift of eternal life. I'll put it so simple as it is. Paul is looking at the root of salvation. That is the moment of salvation. And he uses God's perspective. James is looking at the fruit of salvation. That is after salvation. And he is using human perspective. This is this is the good way of explaining a so-called contradiction, but there is no contradiction. There are five more or six more points when you look into Paul's way of looking and James' way of looking. As I told you, Paul, he mentions justified to mean it is pronounced righteous in the sight of God. And James, proved righteous in the sight of others. And Paul shows how an unbeliever becomes a Christian. But James, he shows how a believer lives as a Christian. And Paul, he emphasizes the root of salvation, but James emphasizes the fruit of salvation. And Paul, he demonstrates God's part with our participation. But James is emphasizing demonstration of us with God's help. Once when we understand these differences James is using of Abraham and Rahab, it would always make a sense for us. We all know, we have, we have read more about Abraham and we have known more about Abraham. If we start reading about Abraham's story, we already know that Abraham took Isaac, his one and only son, whom through Isaac, God promised that Abraham will be blessed and he will be multiplied as a huge nation. He asked that Isaac to be sacrificed. And we all know the story that he took him to the mount and he was about to kill Isaac. And there was a ram that appeared and God gave that ram as an alternative for Isaac. We all know the story. Even before Abraham takes Isaac, we know the end of the story because we have the Bible in our hands. But Abraham did not have that one. He simply trusted in God. He simply trusted in the goodness of the Almighty God. If you, if you look into Hebrews, we read, Abraham considered that God is able to raise people even from the dead. That's, that's the 
faith he had. His faith was exhibited generation after generation. So you see that man, Abraham, is justified to be a person of faith by works and not by faith alone. That's what we see in the verses down here in verse 24 also. And the second example James uses here is Rahab, a polar opposite of Abraham. She was not an Israelite. She was a Gentile. She was not a person who came under the God's covenant people. But still, she believed in God that he would deliver Jericho. Though she was a Gentile, she did not have faith in their false gods. She changed the sides and she demonstrated her faith in our God. What happened in the end, you know that. Even though she was not an Israelite, you, we see Rahab's name in the genealogy of Jesus. That's the test of faith she passed. It's because of her works. We know that Rahab married Salmon. It was Boaz. And Boaz married Ruth. And they got Obed and Jesse, and David, and Jesus. So, what's, what's so important here is the remarkable example, the remarkable example of the lasting fruit of the authentic faith we have. If you look down in verse 26, James concludes the whole section. He reiterates the same point of his thesis. For just as the body without spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Wherever we find any separation, there is death. It is true that physical life and the spirit is separated from the body. The same truth in the Christian life also. When we say that there is life, we need to see faith and works. If a person whose life is without the works, it means two things. If that person is a genuine believer, the result will be a slight towards death like existence. If you do remember the very first chapter we looked into in James, slippery slope towards the sin. The answer for true believers, repent and get back on the path of spiritual life and growth. And there is another kind of a person who simply can't produce real fruit because of one reason, they don't have the root of faith. We have to remember and understand that salvation comes from God and it is a free gift. With 
free gift comes through our simple faith in Jesus Christ. His death and his resurrection. To attain this, to attain this, there is one simple thing. We have to admit that apart from Jesus Christ, we can do nothing. Only when the root of faith is firmly planted can a life produce authentic fruit. And that authentic fruit is pleasing to God and it is so visually seen by others. So by looking into all these things, we always have to be very sure whether we have a fake faith or a genuine faith. If we do have that faith, are we expressing them in the right way, at the right time, the right moment? If we do not have either one, as James does say, it's like a dead spirit. There is no air in the wings, the wing bags. Faith with no works and work with no faith. They both are waste. We need to admit ourselves, analyze ourselves. What is the level of the faith we do have? And what is the level of the works we do have? Are we using these both to please God and accept His commission love every other person, stretch out our arms to the needy people. Are we doing it? We have got a lot of examples we have seen in this world. But I always personally feel this one person who always did the utmost work with the faith in God, Mother Teresa. The whole world was mesmerized by the way she was working. She never had any regrets. She never put up any frown. She never had any complaints. She always had this smile in her face. She did the good work, the perfect faith she had in Jesus Christ. Let us examine ourselves and admit if we lack anything. So God will provide us whatever we lack. That's the reason we always read this verse Thank you, Lord, for the comfort you have given us so that we will be able to comfort the people who need that comfort. Hmm. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Thank you for emphasizing the faith through the works. Thank you for sending down your son who had the faith in us and who has worked his way even before he came by the time he was here and after he has left us. 
even before his birth, during his ministry, and that after his resurrection, Lord, you have emphasized to grow tall in our faith at the same time express our faith through our love and compassion to every other person horizontally reaching every other person thank you at the same time reaching you vertically through our faith lord help us to remember these things and express those things and let us always have a true root of faith and work in us lord help us to always remember the free gift of salvation we have received hmm. and let us always spread the aroma let us always be the light and shake our souls in the places where we go wherever we live whatever we do let people around us see our action see the way we live so that they can absorb the light and taste the salt that you have given us lord thank you for this wonderful privilege you have given us thank you in jesus precious name we pray amen amen amen